Hello and welcome. My name is Benjamin Stewart at BenjaminLStewart.net, making teaching and learning more transparent. Today is September 28th, 2022, and in episode 110, I'll provide a few final tips in completing an academic essay for, uh, for a course, Communicative Abilities in English 1. If you have any thoughts, opinions, or experiences related to today's topic, feel free to reach out to me at my Twitter handle at B-N-L-E-E-Z. For those of you who are taking Communicative Abilities in English 1, today's uh, Wednesday, and we're working towards completing our final draft for Friday. And I want to provide a few final formatting tips, thinking about working in Microsoft Word and how we can make our essay uh, a little bit more standard in terms of just layouts, indentations, spacing, etc. So I want to take a look at a sample text. The first thing we'll look at here is your heading. Make sure that you are consistent with the fonts that you have chosen to use for your essay. Make sure you're consistent in terms of the type of font and also the size. Remember, these are the acceptable fonts for APA 7th edition, but do pay close attention to the size of the font and make sure that the heading, for example, is not any larger than the actual text uh, that is uh, in the body of your essay. So. We also want to make sure that the heading follows a title case format, which means you need to capitalize the main words, capitalize the main words, and make sure you have no ending punctuation. So no periods at the end, no colons at the end of your headings. The only two headings we'll have for our five paragraph essay will be the title of our essay and then towards the bottom, the references heading. Now, a couple of things here. We need to make sure that we have a half an inch indentation in each of our paragraphs. So I would select the whole text. For the purposes of this example, I'll just select the first paragraph, but you'll want to make sure to select all five paragraphs, including the space between each paragraph, and simply move the top slider bar a half an inch over, and then that will automatically format each of your paragraphs to have a half an inch indentation. Of course, you want to make sure that you've set the unit of measure to inches instead of uh, centimeters. Depending on your machine, you may have by default uh, centimeters here at the top of the ruler. If for some reason your ruler doesn't appear, select uh, view and ruler. Now, we also need to make sure that we have correct spacing and Specifically, that we have correct spacing not only within the paragraphs, but also between the headings and the paragraphs and between the paragraphs themselves. So I'm going to select the entire text this time. And I'm going to select this, the ellipsis over here off, the, off to the right, line spacing, line spacing options. And we want to make sure that the spacing before and after are set at zero. We want to make sure that we have set double spaced here and that the check mark in this box that reads don't add space between paragraphs of the same style is selected. So basically four things. Again, zero spacing before and after. Make sure we've set the line spacing at double space and that we've selected this box. By default, depending on where you're working, you'll notice in this particular case when we open this up, it was set correctly, but typically Microsoft Word by default will have extra spacing after each of the paragraphs. This might look like, or it might read eight points instead of what we need, which is zero. And then select OK. You do this once. If you've uh, selected the entire text, you'll do this once and just double check that you don't have any extra spacing between headings and paragraphs and between paragraphs themselves. This is basically what it should look like here. Okay, this is what it should look like. Equal spacing between headings and paragraphs and between paragraphs themselves. Of course, in this example, I still need to add an indentation, which is why it makes it a little difficult to distinguish when each of the paragraphs begin. But once you have your indentations, then it's very uh, easy and comfortable to read. Make sure, as we've talked about in class, we have all of our text aligned to the left. So if, again, select the entire text, 
I think in this example, this is uh, okay. But we do need to make sure we select the text and we have aligned all of the text to the left. Do this again. And it should look like this. Now in the references, when we look at indentations, it's going to be the in inverse of what we just set up for our paragraphs. And in this example, we notice that the sliders are correctly set. The top slider bar should be all the way to the left, and the, the bottom slide bar is over a half an inch. Make sure that your reference is centered to the page, your reference heading. Make sure that it's not italicized, but just regular text, that the first letter is capitalized, the rest of the letters are in lowercase. And again, just double check that there's no punctuation after the heading. All right, now the other thing I'll mention, make sure that you check your citations. And we can easily find examples of how to cite and how to reference. According to APA, if you simply Google articles, type in the word articles, APA 7th edition, and here you'll find, you'll find a lot of online spaces, a lot, a lot of websites that provide examples like the one I'm showing you here. Notice that we have an example of a reference, and we also have a, an example of a, of a citation. So the citation, we want to include just the last name of the author or authors, followed by a comma. And then we have the year. We have a space between the comma and the year, of course. And we want to make sure that the citation appears at the end of the sentence. We want to use what's called parenthetical citations as opposed to narrative citations. So all of the parenthetical or all the citations should have the citation at the end of the sentence, like this example here. We also want to paraphrase all of our citations as opposed to direct quoting. So we won't use any quotation marks, and we want to put in to our own words ideas that we're getting from our articles, from outside sources. So again, parenthetical citations, make sure we're paraphrasing each of our citations, make sure that our citations are at the end of the sentence, but also within each sentence. I think we spoke about on Monday the importance of making sure that our citations are in the sentence that they relate to. It sh there should be no confusion as to which sentences are original ideas, that is, your own original ideas, and which sentences come from an outside source. We can do that by simply making sure that citations appear in the sentence. That is, that the period is after the citation, that it doesn't occur before the citation. Remember that citations are serving as evidence, if we think about the meal plan, Remember, the E stands for evidence, and for our purposes, citations are going to serve as evidence. It's going to be synonymous. The main ideas, the analysis sentences, and the linking or summarizing sentences that make up the rest of your body paragraph will all, or should be, all original ideas. They should be all original ideas. So remember that the citations are there to support your original ideas overall. But we need to make sure that it's very clear to the reader which ideas, which sentences are original and which are not. Which are your own original ideas and which sentences come from an outside source. Make sure also that you never mix within the same sentence original ideas versus ideas that come from an outside source. It's all or nothing. Each sentence should be either completely an original thought or that one sentence should be completely uh, someone else's idea or thought. All right, so basically that's what I wanted to share with you here today, this day, September 28th, as we're getting close to completing our drafts. Today in class and on Friday, I will continue answering questions and providing feedback as necessary. Today and tomorrow, you still, if you wish, uh, may send me a request for, you to, to, for me to give you feedback by simply going into the comment section in Microsoft Word and mentioning me by using the ampersand, my full name. That will prompt me in my email to enter your document and leave you feedback. Okay, So this is, I think, the preferred way 
that I would like for you to request if you need to, uh, if you want to request feedback from me, especially outside of class. Uh, today in class will probably do work the same way. I'll give you time in class to continue working on your essay and asking questions. And uh, we can determine in class whether our conversations need to be just rel related to what you're working on or if we need to turn it into a class discussion. All right. So today I have shared with you a few tips and how you can format your Word document. And uh, again, make sure those of you who have class with me uh, this semester are reaching out to me uh, to receive feedback as needed. My name is Benjamin Stewart at BenjaminLStewart.net, making teaching and learning more transparent. Thanks for listening.